Yovachi bhogastam devebhya agayat Yat kalyanam vadati thadatmane Devidura nena vaina udgatra tyeshyantiti Tama bhidrutya papmana vidyan Sayasa papma Ya deve dama prati rupang vadati sa eva sa papma. Text 2 They said to the organ of speech, Chant the Udgita for us. All right, said the organ of speech, and chanted for them. The common good that comes of the organ of speech, it secured for the gods by chanting while the fine speaking it utilized for itself. The Asuras knew that through this chanter the gods would surpass them. They charged it and struck it with evil. That evil is what we come across when one speaks improper things. They, the gods, after deciding thus, said to the organ of speech, that is, the deity identified with the organ, Chant the Udgita, or perform the function of the priest called Udgatri, for us. That is, they thought that this function belonged to the deity of the organ of speech, and that it was the deity referred to by the mantra for repetition, From evil lead me to good, mantra 1.3.28. Here the organ of speech and the rest are spoken of as the agents of meditation and work, Why? Because in reality, all our activities in the field of meditation and work are done by them and belong to them. That they are not done by the self will be stated at length in the fourth chapter, in the passage, it thinks as it were, and shakes as it were, etc. Mantra 4, 3, 7. Here, too, at the end of the chapter, it will be concluded that the whole universe of action its factors and its results, beginning with the undifferentiated, comes within the category of ignorance. This universe indeed consists of these three, name, form, and action. Mantra 161. And the Supreme Self, which is beyond the undifferentiated, does not consist of name, form, and action, and is the subject matter of knowledge, will be concluded separately by the denial of things other than the self with the words, not this, not this. While the transmigrating self, which is conjured up by the limiting adjunct, upadi, of the aggregate of the organ of speech, etc., will be shown as falling under the category of that aggregate in the passage, the self comes out as a separate entity from these elements, and this separateness is destroyed with them. Mantras 2, 4, 12 and 4, 5, 13. Therefore it is but proper to speak of the organ of speech, etc., as being the agents of meditation and work and receiving their fruits. All right, so be it, said the organ of speech when requested by the gods and chanted for them for the sake of the gods who wanted it done. What was the particular effect of the chanting done by the organ of speech for the sake of the gods? This is being stated. It is the common good of all the organs that comes through the instrumentality of the organ of speech, on account of the activities of speaking, etc., for this is the fruit shared by all of them. 
that it secured for the gods by chanting the three hymns called Pavamana, while the result produced by chanting the remaining nine, which, as we know from the scriptures, accrues to the priest, the fine or articulated speaking it utilized for itself. Perfect enunciation of syllables is the special function of the deity of speech, hence that is specified by the expression fine speaking. While the effect of speaking that helps the body and organs in general belongs to the sacrificer as his share. Now, finding a loophole in the attachment of the deity in utilizing its power of fine speaking for itself, the Asuras knew, what? That through this chanter the gods would surpass them, overcome the natural thoughts and actions by the light of those acquired through the scriptures, as represented by the chanter. Knowing this, they charged it, the chanter, and struck, that is, touched it with evil, their own attachment. That evil which was injected into the vocal organ of Prajapati in his former incarnation is visible even today. What is it? What we come across when one speaks improper things, or what is forbidden by the scriptures. It is that which prompts one to speak, even against one's wishes, what is inelegant, dreadful, false, and so on. That it still persists in the vocal organ of people who have descended from Prajapati is inferred from this effect of improper speaking. This evil that is so inferred is the one that got into the vocal organ of Prajapati, for an effect conforms to its cause. Namaste. So, the demigods, the devas, ask the organ of speech to chant the Udgita. The Udgita are the hymns of the Samaveda. There are 12 of them, which are chanted as part of the Agnishtoma sacrifice. So, this sacrifice gives light, Agni, it's fire. It's purifying. And so the demons were very concerned that if the demigods were able to do this, they would surpass them, even though they were outnumbered. And they would take control of the universe. So in the allegory, we are talking about the organs of the body and how the organs are naturally attracted to sense objects. And this is evil because it creates karma, which leads to rebirth, and which is suffering. So we don't want suffering, we want liberation. Therefore, the organs have to be redirected inward towards the self. And in the beginning, this is done by purifying them according to the Vedic rites. The Jyotishtoma, which is part of the Agnishtoma, which has as one of its sections the Udgita, which is chanted by the Ugatri priest, is one of the most powerful of the Vedic rites. So the demons were very concerned that if these devas are able to bring off this sacrifice successfully, then we're finished. We're out of business. <laughs> we can't anymore mislead the self into this maya, into this sinful action through enjoyment of external objects. So what did they do? They cursed the organ of speech. They touched it with their evil, which is their attachment to the sense objects. And they made the speech itself faulty. Because normally, when the Udgita is chanted properly, the benefit of the first three stanzas goes to those for whom the sacrifice is performed. And the rest of the nine stanzas go to the chanter. So they were very concerned. The demons were very concerned that this Udgatri, the organ of speech would become so powerful that he would be able to vanquish them literally just with a word. 
So they attacked and they misled him. And therefore, our organs of speech are also contaminated. And we tend to say things which are not true, which are harmful, hurtful, inelegant, as Shankara says, meaning that they are kind of stupid. <laughs> and we therefore demean ourselves and we lose that special power of speech called Vaksiddhi. Vaksiddhi means we always speak the truth. Therefore, whatever we say comes true. It becomes the truth. This means the creative power of speech. So by the organ of speech being in a sinful state, everyone is misleading everybody else. Since, as the Upanishad will show later on, everything is connected with everything else. Everything affects everything else. So because the organ of speech in the original Prajapati was contaminated with evil, therefore all of his descendants, which means all the beings in the universe, have the same affliction. So how do we get out of this? Well, of course, the Upanishads is going to explain it. But briefly, we have to purify the organ of speech, the function of speech, with fire. What does that mean? Fire means light, jyoti. Light means knowledge. So the organ of speech has to be purified by the fire of knowledge. And of course, this knowledge comes from the scriptures. Not only that, we have to associate with those who have realized that knowledge, who not only understand it intellectually, but whose very being has become that knowledge through extensive and repetitive performance of sadhana. That is the only way. Therefore, toward the end of the chapter, the Upanishad will recommend some mantras and these mantras are very powerful and have come down to us in the present day and are still chanted by Vedic priests everywhere. So this is the cure. And we have to take shelter of this advice and implement it in our own lives. Now, it's not enough to simply read about it, not enough to simply understand intellectually. We have to actually experience it and see for ourselves what is the benefit of pure speech. And we will see that is victory over all evil. Om Tatsa, Om Shakti Om, Om Namah Shivaya.